Hello Greets Freaks and Makeup Geeks, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. In today's video I'm not actually going to be doing my makeup, hence why I'm allowed to look like absolute trash. Because I'm going to be off camera, I'm actually doing something on my sister. She has a history project at the moment and she has to make a storyboard to do with the Black Death, the plague. Um, so I'm going to attempt to make her look like a plague victim, so very pale faced, sunken eyes, boils, open wounds, stuff like that. I've never tried anything like this before, so this could go horribly, terribly wrong, but we're just going to give it a go, you know, worst case it looks terrible, she'll just stick to the original plan. Before I get into it, if you haven't already subscribed, if you could click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified when I upload. Also follow me on my special effects Instagram, I sometimes post other things on there, link is in the description. And with that being said, let's get into it. So on camera she already looks quite pale, she is like paler than me, um, but she's actually, she's more pink in person, she's more pink and freckly in person. Also if she's going cross-eyed at any point, I haven't punched her, she just has um, dodgy eyes and she can't actually see what's going on very well without her glasses, so <laughs> for all she knows I could just be ruining her. So first of all I'm going to take some kind of sponge, probably just one of these little pink yarn sponges, whoa that's definitely focused, and my special effects white base face paint, oops, because uh, plague victims tend to not look the healthiest. So I'm going to take some of this white base and just make her even more white than she already is! <laughs> if you hear the phone going off, I've got things going on on my Instagram and my boyfriend messaging me, so we're just going to go with it. This is not a blending sponge. Um, I might switch to using my foundation brush in a minute, but to add a base. <laughs> I just, I just, oh, oh no, my eye, my eye, he's gonna go in my eye. <laughs> So you can't really tell on camera, but that's actually quite patchy, but I didn't really want a full white base anyways, I sort of just wanted that slightly ashen look. She does look a little bit hairy in places, but it just wasn't blending well. Um, I'm going to take some white powder, this is actually, oh god, that's a bit, you know, suspicious. It's kind of just baby powder to be honest, because I don't have any baking powder, and I'm going to very carefully try to set some of this down. It's going to go everywhere because it's not made for this, but... So to add some colour back into her face, I'm going back in with my favourite palette of all time, Revolution Reloaded Marvellous Mattes, it's this rainbow one. I am using some of this black here, but I'll be mixing it with a little bit with the white, kind of making more of a grey, adding some kind of contour, it's more sort of dirt shadows. I'm probably going to add cream paint on top of this. I'm also going in with my Studio London face palette, it does have a uh, normal human colour contour shade, I'm going to add a little bit of that on top and then I will re-powder over it to lighten up a bit. So I've added a little bit of more natural contour, I am going to go back in with my white powder. Um, I know it's really really dark and dirty but the point is I mean, it should be fairly dirty anyways, I mean she's you know dead on the floor so <laughs> you'll also notice that when I was putting the contour on I've kind of put little bits everywhere you can't really see as well on camera I am going to zoom in a bit kind of just adding more dark sort of dirty patches because again given the living conditions and the state of her health she wouldn't have been the most clean and hygienic I'm aware this contour looks utterly diabolical, upon realisation I put it in the wrong place I might go back and fix that, but for now I'm going to take my Marvellous Mattes palette again and start working on her eyes Again I'm probably going to add some cream paint in here as well But for now I'm going to see what I can do with eyeshadows um, And I'm going to start taking a mix of sort of different shades of purples, possibly some red, probably a bit of the black And really deepening up her eyes because, I mean they tended to develop very sort of black, like black eyes basically. Taking some of this more reddish purple up here first and just sort of giving her some lovely eyeshadow. 
then deepening up towards the inner corner with a bit of this darker purple kind of just covering all red again I'm also now taking a bit of this black doing the same thing it's really deepening up here to give the impression and possibly along the brow bone of sunken eyes so there I was sort of just taking a little bit of my white and sort of this white here sort of softening up a little bit um yes it would be quite bold but also it wouldn't be so purple you know it kind of has to be muted into the fact she has very white skin so i'm just going to quickly go do the other eye off camera and then we'll start to add more depth and bruising to the rest of the so now that she's looking fairly panda eyed i could work on that a little bit but it doesn't really matter for now i think i'm going to go in my favorite step and start adding some sort of wounds and injury i'm not 100 percent sure how i'm going to do this but obviously the point is they develop boils um, and lumps and nasty ah uh -uh things because so <laughs> that's professional terminology so what I think I might do is get an entire cotton wool ball that's wrong lens an entire cotton wool ball do you head that way? no the other way <laughs> and where she's got this really bad contour that I didn't like sort of just stick an entire cotton wool ball to her face with latex because if you think about it I mean they are fairly lumpy and that will also cover up whatever's going on here makeup hacks so yeah i'm just gonna go grab some latex and start kind of very carefully apply an entire cotton wool ball to her face so as you can probably tell by the little mark on her face we already tried twice to apply that cotton wool ball and it just didn't really work so instead i've kind of shredded it into little pieces and i'm going to apply this cotton wool ball using trust leaf latex rubber this is technically modeling liquid latex However, it is skin safe, it works just as well. So what I'm going to do is take a small piece like this of my cotton. It doesn't really matter that it's not round because I can always change the shape of it. I'm going to dip it a little bit in my liquid latex to give it some kind of shape and hold and then apply it to where I want the wound to be. And that makes it a little bit flatter than applying an entire cotton wool ball, which is what we tried before, and that was a terrible idea. <laughs> so then I'm also going to take my spatula and sort of just blend this. As I said, this is technically actually modelling latex, and whilst it works just as well as skin safe, and it is skin safe latex, it just means it dries a little bit faster for some reason. Don't know whether that's just the kind, or whether it's the brand, or whatever, but it just means you have to work a little bit faster. See, this is why some people don't like using cotton latex it is very much a beginner method because if you tilt your head up a little bit please you can kind of see lines underneath where it doesn't blend as seamlessly into the skin this is why i'm probably going to add some wax around it um i'll just keep adding multiple layers in this instance uh tearing away from the skin or not being flushed to the skin it doesn't really matter as much because this is an open wound sort of boil so her skin wouldn't be the healthiest anyways Whilst this first layer is drying here, I'm going to do another wound, possibly up here on her head or something. Um, and then once the first layer is dried, I'm going to build on and make it a little bit bigger. So as you can see, I also added a more open wound using the same method of cotton and latex, but leaving a gap in the middle. I'm just going now to build these up. They didn't dry very well naturally because of the amount of latex. You get a hairdryer on them, fix it instantly. So I'm going to add another little thin layer to this another layer to this and possibly some more under here just to make them bigger and more in depth so as you can see we've added some more layers if she turns her head kind of sideways you can see this one and then tilt your head down a little bit please you can kind of see how i've added more depth to this one um it's kind of hard to see that one because of the light and then i've also added a little bit to the bottom of that one so we're just going to dry those and then we can start adding some color and into that one blood and ooze and my favorite part so this isn't this bit up here isn't entirely dry because obviously when you've got a thick wadge of cotton soaked in latex it's going to take a long time to dry even with a hairdryer but it is dry enough to work with and this is the thing is it is going to stay a little bit squishy even when it dries because the cotton on the inside isn't entirely soaked it is just going to be this weird squishy mess but that's kind of accurate so i'm just going to take some of my powder again and just trying to remove a little bit of the shine um, i'm not as bothered about removing shine as i usually would be because boils do have a bit of a shine to them it's more just making sure there's no extra sticky latex 
This is why when I'm doing steps like this, this is a really old makeup brush I don't use for my real makeup, um, I only use it for special effects because if you get latex on a good powder brush, it's ribboned. There are little bits of this brush that have got uh, liquid latex and glues and stuff that are never going to come off, which is why I use this brush purely for this kind of makeup now. This is why I'm not so keen on this latex either, as you can't really see on camera, but it leaves patches and colour doesn't stick to it. You'll see when I start applying colour. Colour doesn't apply and stick very well to this latex, and to this day I am not entirely sure why, and I've had it since Christmas. <laughs> I've had it for like half a year, and I still can't get it to work properly, but we shall see. So now that I have powdered that, I am going to start adding some colours, and I'm going to debate between cream paints and eyeshadows. I think I'm going to go around the wounds first with eyeshadow to add the initial colouring, and then when it comes to the actual body of it, I'm probably just going to use cream paint. So we're going to start with the first one and going round the wound again, because using this same eyeshadow palette, taking some of this red shade around the edges of the wound. So I've zoomed up really really close on this wound now, and you can't, it still shows up in camera. Can you see this patch here? Latex will not hold eyeshadow pigment, and I'm not entirely sure why, it just won't. Also ignore that weird black spot around about there, that's on the lens. Um, so yeah, I've still got these patches. In normal instances doing a wound with latex, I wouldn't want that, but because it is a boil and boils have that shininess where the skin doesn't line up properly, for once I'm not bothered. Usually it bugs the hell out of me. So I'm just going to deepen up that colour, again taking a mix of these purples, a more ready pinky toned and the dark purple, and a bit of the black, doing exactly what I did in the eyes, but around the boil. It will be slightly lighter than the eyes because it is a fresh wound, but still going to be very bruised and sore. Yeah, you can really see, now that I've added this dark, of how it doesn't colour the latex. I'm really not sure what's going on there. I've also started to bring some of that colour of the eyeshadow onto the actual sort of boil blob itself. Um, I'm taking some of my yellow here, as I've zoomed in, it's really hard to tell where I am. I'm taking some of this yellow here and kind of adding that over as well, mostly just over the actual boil, but kind of going around the edges. I didn't tap that off and now it's going everywhere. <laughs> So I'm now going to go back over that with cream paint. I have here my 11 Ever Bruise Wheel sort of face paint, and I'm going to see if I can get cream paint to work a little better over the latex itself. So probably just going to take this sponge here, um, I might go in with a brush, and taking mostly this lightest red here, some of this dark red, and just going to try to apply that over the latex. So what I've just got in with there is actually technically an eyeliner brush and I can know, I can know, I can see in areas it does look weirdly patchy and li like more like lines than applied pigment but again it's this whole thing of this is a boil growing out of someone's face there will be lines, there will be veins, there will be all kinds of horrible things going on. And because latex dries yellow, the actual wound itself now looks fairly yellow. I am probably just going to take a little bit of this yellow cream paint in the middle here, just to add even more colour. However, this isn't entirely better. So now that I've finished this wound, I am going to do the same on the head wound, and I will do the cheek piece slightly differently because that is a slightly different wound. But the outside, I will do the exact same, and then I'll fill in. So to fill the inside of this wound, I've kind of already started, as you can see, because I am basically just doing the same coloration as that, using this wheel and taking mostly this light red and this dark red, and just using what's actually meant to be an eyeliner brush to fill in the middle. It's mostly going to have blood in the middle, so this doesn't really matter, but it's kind of just a case of all of these lighter areas 
where there shouldn't be latex showing. Trying my hardest to cover those up with cream paint because as I said, for some bizarre reason my um, eyeshadows won't stick to latex. So now I'm sort of just generally adding more paint bruising into this look. Her eyes do look darker on camera than they do in person, not entirely sure why. Um, but I'm sort of just adding that sort of bruising everywhere, again going back in with this palette. So taking a little bit of the sort of purples and blacks and kind of just adding a little bit round the nose. The whole general idea is that this body, even if it's still alive, is rotting. So everything is going to be purple and black, everything's going to be sort of peeling and not particularly nice looking. So I am just going to add this colour in various areas of her face. Even in areas where I haven't actually physically made wounds, I'm giving the impression of bruising or ageing or the idea of it spreading. So whilst there might not actually be a wound here, there is going to be sort of this yellow red bruising as if it might be forming. So now that I've sort of continued this bruising around the face, I think I'm going to try and do her lips. I'm probably just going to take a black cream paint. I have here my Eleven Ever cream paint face paint palette. So probably just going to mix a little bit of that black with some like lip balm. Um, possibly using purple, not entirely sure, just again to give the whole rotting look. So now I'm going to do my all time favourite step, which is fake blood. This is Meron stage blood, it's syrup based. For now I'm just going to be doing this little open wound here. Um, I found that this blood, for some bizarre reason, doesn't like to stay in the wound, it tends to drip out. At some point she will also have blood pouring from her mouth, however that probably won't be on film, I'll probably just put the pictures in at the end, as working to her storyboard, the blood bit comes in afterwards, so we're doing it in segments. However, this side wound is going to immediately have fake blood in it, if you tilt your head please, now that's side you Just using my spatula to try and force this in. It's very sticky and it's a weird shaped wound, but I'm kind of scraping off on the edges. It doesn't really matter if this gets on the shirt because, as I've said, we're purposely using that's a lot of blood. We're purposely using a really old shirt, and the blood would probably be more realistic, anyways. Also, it looks now as if I'm covering up all of the inside paintwork I just did. The reason behind that is, as I said, this blood tends to separate. That's right and not stay within the wound. Um, as gravity pulls it down and the drip looks really realistic, um, unfortunately it tends to just completely entirely leave the wound, so I need some colour in there to fill that space. This is going to drip quite far, so at some point I may have to catch it so it doesn't go entirely all the way down her face. So as you can see we've got a nice drippy wound going on here, and I think this is the look almost finished. I'm just going to sit, kind of analyse it for a second, look at it, see if there's anything else I want to do. I'm considering adding blood around these boils, um, just like a little bit. I do have a different kind of blood. I'm going to kind of sit, analyse that. Um, I have a sp <laughs> Yep, that's just ripped on it. So we're going to quickly go analyse this, now the right. Done some analysing. Um, and, hold on. And whilst I spent ages powdering to remove some of the shine so I could get the powders and stuff to stick, we've decided boils would be more uh, shiny than this, so I'm just going to take a little bit of Vaseline and sort of reapply the shine um, to this sort of infected wound pus thing. Not too much, just enough to give... Also yes, I am sort of dotting things on her head because, you know, sweat, you'd be, you'd be very sweaty because um, you get come over with extreme heat. So now we've added that, I think we're going to go outside and photo shoot, I think. And also, did you know that the uh, there's a really effective way of cleaning spare blood that's kind of been up her nose off a spatula? You sort of just... <laughs> Yeah, this shirt is never going to be able to be worn again. Um, it's an art shirt, but this is the inside of the shirt. 
She's kind of been stabbed. <laughs> this has kind of become a bit exorcism-y. Anyway, it's right. To the outdoors for a photo shoot. With my very dead plague victim. I know, I've got blood in the chair. <laughs> So I forgot to film an outro for this video and I'm working to a tight time constraint. I mean I'm trying to edit and uh, film at the same time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, leave any questions, comments, concerns down below. This was my favourite piece to create. I was really proud of how it turned out so I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Um, I know it was a long one, but it was so worth it. But yeah, that is it for this video.